Hey guys, it's me, Mrs. Maine, here to introduce the 10th and final history mystery of the summer. I know what you guys are all thinking. You're thinking, Mrs. Maine, good job cleaning out your office. Way to stick with a problem. Well, I didn't exactly clean out my office so much as I found a great camera angle uh, that lets me film without you seeing all of the boxes and junk all over the floor still waiting to be organized. This is what's called being a problem solver. Anyway, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about what mystery we wanted to end on, and we voted. And this is the mystery we voted for, the Bermuda Triangle, a.k.a. the Devil's Triangle, a.k.a. the final history mystery of the season. So stay tuned. Before the 1960s, uh, normal people didn't know what the Devil's Triangle was, but sailors have been telling stories about this particular patch of ocean for quite a long time. Christopher Columbus, I was gonna say our good friend Christopher Columbus, but Christopher Columbus is not my friend. He and I have some serious issues. Do not get me started on Christopher Columbus. He knows what he did. Anyway, where was I? Oh, Christopher Columbus, when sailing to the New World, uh, reportedly, as he sailed through the Bermuda Triangle, made some notes in the captain's logs about strange lights appearing in the distance from seemingly nowhere, uh, which is kind of interesting. I'm just saying. The Bermuda Triangle, also known as the Devil's Triangle, is uh, an area of the Atlantic Ocean bounded by Miami, Bermuda, and Puerto Rico. Uh, if you just take a ruler and draw lines between the city of Miami, the territory of Puerto Rico, and the island of Bermuda, you get this uh, weird tri triangle area where an unusual number of ships and planes have run into difficulty. One of the ships uh, that's often come up when we talk about the Bermuda Triangle is the Mary Celeste. There it is right there, the Mary Celeste. Now we've studied it before, so um, go ahead and fast forward like 30 seconds if you already know the story. But in 1872, a ship set sail from New York headed to Europe, and when it was found floating in the ocean a couple of weeks later, the cargo was still there, all of the um, belongings of the people aboard ship were still there, coats were hanging on hooks, all the dishes were put away in the kitchen, but all of the people were missing just gone. It's a spectacular mystery and it's a really good one to talk about when we talk about the Bermuda Triangle because it illustrates both the good things and the bad things about trying to research the Bermuda Triangle. So first, the Mary Celeste is a real ship. Uh, there's tons of documentation, there's letters, there's newspaper articles, there's a court case. So we know it's a real ship that really lost its entire crew for no reason that anyone can tell. Um, that's not always the case with the Bermuda Triangle. A lot of ships that are uh, supposedly the victims of the Bermuda Triangle, we can't verify ever went missing, or if they did go missing, they didn't go missing anywhere near the Atlantic Ocean. So you got to be careful when you research the Bermuda Triangle because a lot of disappearances of planes and ships um, probably didn't have anything to do with the Bermuda Triangle, but they get sort of lumped in. The other thing you might have picked up on, you smarties, you, is that I said the Mary Celeste uh, sailed out of New York. If you know anything about geography, you know New York is pretty darn far away from Florida, Puerto Rico, Bermuda. Uh, so they would have had to make a weird sort of turn and they were headed to Europe, so it's kind of the wrong direction. Now, a storm could have blown them off course, but we have no evidence that the Mary Celeste was ever in the Bermuda Triangle. It's just that it was such a spectacular mystery, and no one knows for sure where it went to before it was found floating um, in the ocean west of Portugal. Uh, so it kind of gets lumped in. When you're researching the Bermuda Triangle, be aware that especially before GPS, we really don't know for certain, a lot of the planes and ships that have been um, the victims of the Bermuda Triangle. We don't know if they've actually been to the Bermuda Triangle, so keep that in mind as we research. Uh, be really critical of the stories you read. And uh, it wouldn't hurt to consult a map, I'm just saying. 
just like every week, uh, read the introduction, read the facts, skim the evidence, fill out the survey, and I'll see you on Thursday for our final Zoom conference of our history mystery series. Even though this is the last mystery we're investigating, I have one more history mystery video for you. I'm going to film a third bonus episode where I show off some of my travel journals because I haven't been everywhere in the world, but I've been to some of the places that we've talked about, like the Loch Ness and... Um, the tomb of King Tut, and here I am all, you know, uncursed. So, so that's fun. See you guys Thursday. Happy sleuthing. Hi dog. Thanks for drinking from the toilet while I was filming. That's that added a really nice realistic touch. Hip. Come on. Let me shame you in front of my YouTube audi audience. I have like 16 subscribers. Yeah, I do. Look at this. She's not, she's not sorry even a little bit. Oh, okay. Well, now, now my hands are clean. It's been a long summer, you guys.